going on, Houdat Nation? Hope y'all are having a wonderful weekend. In today's video, we're going to be going through the seven-round mock draft from the Athletics' Dane Brugler. But before we get into that, I encourage you to subscribe for our live coverage, not just for the NFL draft and through the offseason, but even during the regular season. We're live every single game day. We're live during the week discussing everything you need to know about game day. So lock us in, subscribe today for more live Saints coverage. Let's kick it off with Olu Fashanu, the Dane Brugler, the athletic uh, draft expert, had the Saints selecting the offensive tackle out of Penn State. Here's what he had to say about Fashanu. Considering the Saints' depth chart and the players expected to be drafted in this range, offensive tackle makes too much sense. Olu Fashanu might be the best case scenario for New Orleans. Now, I do believe that every single sign, all the signs out there, all the ideas, all the rumors, everything points to the Saints going offensive line in round one, which then gives you the ability in round two to have some fun and get creative. I said this on the show the other day. I'm a believer in work hard and then play hard. Get the shit you need to do get done first. Draft your offensive tackle. And then have some fun. Go draft receivers. Go draft DBs. Go draft linebackers. Go get whatever the hell you want. But you got to take care of what you need to take care of first. In round two, Brugler had the Saints going with a really, really fun idea. Xavier Worthy, the speedster out of Texas. And let me tell you something about this kid. He is not only an insanely talented athlete, and insanely fast, but he's dynamic and explosive. Now, the size, he's, he's, he's that big around. But, hey, he can freaking move. And here's the thing. Could you imagine an offense where you have Chris Olave, pretty damn fast, Rashid Shahid, really freaking fast, and Xavier Worthy, super freaking fast, all on the same offense? It'd be pretty great. I mean... I think he would fit into this depth chart so well. I think that he could immediately be your replacement for Cedric Wilson. He could immediately take snaps over for Equinemia St. Brown. I love the idea of bringing in Xavier Worthy. I think that this would be an awesome selection. I'm just not so sold that he'll be available at 45. So I think that a more realistic option is like uh, a Malachi Corley. I think that that's a little bit more realistic because I just think that uh, it feels like the Chiefs are just going to love a guy like Xavier Worthy, right? Right? All right, let's go to Troy Taylor, the punter. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Dane Brugler had the Saints select a punter at round five, number 150 overall. Now, I'm going to just be honest with you guys. I do expect a punter to be brought in, and, and I think that that's something that the Saints should do. Got to have some sort of competition for Lou Headley. You got to see who the better punter is going to be. But I don't think they're bringing one in in round five. I don't think they're using their first fifth round selection to bring in a punter. UDFA, different story. Free agency afterwards, different story. But let's talk about the punter competition. So in terms of Troy Taylor, he had 93 punts for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He averaged 48.2 yards per punt, where Lou Headley averaged 43 yards per punt on just 75 attempts. Now, his long is five yards more, 67 yards versus 62 yards. But this is an interesting topic to discuss here because one thing Lou Headley does extremely well and actually better than any punter in the NFL is how often he downs it inside the 20. So Lou Headley has an inside the 20 percentage of 41.33%. Troy Taylor, only 2.15%. And that is something that the Saints value. Headley is not going to flip the field, but he is going to down it inside the 20 if he's given the opportunity. So I think that this could be an interesting punter competition. Again, I'm just not drafting uh, a punter. That's just me, though. But what say you, Saints fans? Maybe you're different. Maybe you have a different draft philosophy than me. Just give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Would you use a draft pick on a punter for special teams? Don't think you need to go kicker because I already brought in Charlie Smith in the International Pl Player Pathway Program, but drafting a punter, I'm okay. Here we go to Dylan Lauby, the running back 
out of New Hampshire. He is your fifth round selection at number 168 overall, according to Dane Brugler. And here's what he had to say on the running back. The Saints love running backs who add value as pass catchers. And that is the bread and butter for Dylan Lowby. He could moonlight as a slot receiver if, or if needed. So I do think that using him as a slot receiver could actually be a really interesting idea because you could maybe use some pre-snap motion, hand the ball off, let Kubiak just freaking cook with this kid. And the production is insane. He is super athletic, super explosive, and this is a player that is super high on my draft board. I would love the Saints to make the selection. And fun fact, when I was out at the Combine in Indy, me and Harrison Graham here at Chat Sports, we went to go get some tacos for some lunch. And Dylan Labby and his buddy were eating at a table next to us, so got to love that. Marcus Harris at number 170 overall in the fifth round. He is a defensive tackle for the Auburn Tigers. And I know a lot of y'all hate Auburn, and I know a lot of y'all love Tigers. But this guy is on LSU Tiger. Let me tell you about this kid in the scouting profile. Six foot two, 286 pounds. He had 40 tackles last year, 11 tackles for loss, seven sacks, and he is a run stopper with some special teams value as well. He can contribute on the special team side of the ball, and that's a thing and a trait that the Saints like to see in their later round uh, selections especially. They want to see those guys earn their reps on the field and be effective in special teams, and I think that this could be an interesting selection uh, with Marcus Harris adding to the depth chart for the defense. But really quick, I got to show y'all these draft hats. These are the official 2024 draft hats that the Saints players will be rocking after they are picked. You can go and get black. You can get gray. You can get curve bill. You can get flat bill. I don't care what you do. Just go to chatsports.com slash Saints draft and make sure you use our link so that way Fanatics knows that we sent you. If you go and buy this hat, tend to Take a picture, post it on social media, and tag me, and I'll give you a retweet and show you some love. All right, let's discuss an edge rusher out of Troy, Javon Solomon. And here's the deal about this guy. the He does struggle a little bit versus the run, but he is a talented pass rusher, and he's a situational pass rusher. So to me, that means like you're not going to have him be on the edge rush, and you're not going to have him be your edge rusher and on the field every snap of every game. You're going to throw him in when you need a sack, when you need or when you're anticipating a pass. When you know a throw is coming, throw in Javon Solomon. He had really nice production. He has a nice profile, but again, he does struggle versus the run, so that's something to worry about. Now, Jerrion Jones, he is a really decent corner out of Florida State. The Seminole gets drafted at number 190 overall in the sixth round. And I do think that the Saints could use a cornerback. I don't think it's a massive priority, but I do think that this is a guy that could be talented in the slot, and he could challenge an Alante Taylor as a nickel kind of player. And he does need to improve his tackling. You can see the, uh, the production right below me. Just 25 tackles last year, three interceptions, three pass breakups. And he is just five foot 11, 190 pounds, which is a little bit smaller. So if you want to be a good tackler, he's going to have to put on some weight and he's going to have to work on his form and his technique in order to be a little bit more effective. But really quick, if you are excited about the NFL draft and if you just like the NFL draft, if you think it's a fun time of the year, hit the thumbs up, like this video and show some love in the comments because, hey, I love the draft and I think you should love the draft as well. So round six, number 199 overall, Josh Proctor, the safety out of Ohio State. The pipeline of the Buckeyes to the Saints stays alive with this pick. And I do think that safety could be a late round target for the Saints. I don't think it's a big priority, but Tyron Matthew, Jonathan Abram coming back as starters. Then you have Jordan Howden as a nice young depth piece in the chamber as well. And KT Leviston, he is a guard out of Kansas State. To be honest, the Saints need some help at the interior offensive line, and I think that this is a player that could offer you some assistance there and at least offer you some young depth in competition. To be honest, my final thoughts of this whole draft, I really, really liked it. You addressed offensive tackle. You addressed interior offensive line. 
You also added weapons on both sides. You got a running back in Dylan Lowby. You brought in a wide receiver in Xavier Worthy. You also added some pass rushers. You added some really talented pieces on the DB area. And I think that these, or that these picks would lead to some good competition on both sides of the ball. And that's what this Saints team needs is competition to get the best out of each individual player. And if you enjoyed today's content, I encourage you to subscribe and lock us in for more free videos around your New Orleans Saints. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, Saints fans, y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.